Hey there, it's Potmos, and thank you for clicking on this video and going to watch it. I hope you enjoy it. We'll get time going, and then we'll see what we can do. But first, let's enjoy this view, because we can really see the extent of our village from all the way down here, all the way to up there with the farms and the windmills. I think that looks really cool. And I think we've built ourselves, well, a pretty nice village. Of course, I hope we can continue for a while and see how much further we can get it, if my computer agrees to that as well. But yeah, I really like it and enjoy it, so I just thought we should take a moment and check this out. Now, we still have pretty a pretty good building queue with a lot of homes that we need to grow our population. We're trying to reach a thousand here, and that will be pretty cool. So let's hope we can do that. In the meantime... Um, I have been a little bit busy with doing uh, things on the crop rotation system to do some research on it, I have to say. There's only one issue, because one and a half weeks ago, uh, our little girl came down with COVID, and she's still sick from it. So that's a little bit of an issue. And, oh, we got that um, chicken coo. So, most of my time goes to... Um, taking care of her, and my wife had to uh, be away. Well, our kid is sick 10 days now, and my wife has been away for 9 days of that, so I had to do all the taking care, which is completely fine, but I didn't have any time to play a game, let alone record it, so finally I get to record something. So I didn't put all these ideas into practice. I did a few a while ago, but, well, we're just going to test them out on the uh, farms that we already have. Uh, as soon as these chicken coos are done, because we're going to set them up as well. But yeah, we're going to try to optimize the yields that we get from our farms. And, well, that should be very nice. Let's set this up already. But, well, let's talk about the chicken coo first, because we have two extra chicken coos soon. Let's hope we can already apply this to all and apply this to all. I think we can skip the wheat, since they now have buckwheat and linseed, but we need to make sure that we produce enough linseed, and we only have six in store, which is not enough. But I think we can bring this down to 250, perhaps, and apply to all, so at least they will use less wheat. That will be good. All we need to do now is wait until that is completely done, but what we can already do is relocate some chickens and hatchlings, and we're going to do half. So half of these will go to the new chicken coo that we already have, so I'll go to it. Oh, we'll have to check first if they... Yeah, they're bringing in the food still, so we'll have to wait for that. Let's go speed 3 for a little while. This one is done. So we can do apply to all and apply to all. So all settings are now applied to this one as well. And... Ooh, they still have wood there, although... Ooh, and this is new, all the lines, so perhaps... Well, hopefully that goes away at some point. Otherwise, we'll get a lot of lines. We'll check it out later. I think a new little update came out, so that's probably why that's happening. Right, we have enough food here now. They're bringing it in there as well, so we can soon do the chickens. Let's do a trade deal first. Or not, we don't... Ooh, we do have a lot of flax that we can trade. So perhaps slow down a bit. This is a messenger from Refa coming by land. So let's add some flax to it. Let's say 2,000. So we can trade some flax and make some money out of it. 2,000, let's have a deal. Alright. Anything else? I don't think we need to do anything else. Maybe we can buy some wheat, but... It's not really necessary. Alright, so here we go. Let's move the chickens. So, 15, 15. It's still there. That's very nice. And let's relocate to this one. Now they will get the chickens and they can take care of them. Now we'll do the same with the other one. Just get half out of it and relocate it. I already move, of course. And hopefully we get a lot of extra chickens out of this. Well, that should do the trick. Still have to set this. Yeah, alright. So everything is set up. They can do their job. Now, let's go to the farms. 
Now, I have to say, this works best if you have plows on the farms. Problem is, we're going to use fields a lot more intensive, so we need extra plows in our farms. So, we need one, two, three, let's check how many we need. Four, well, let's start off with five and six. We need six extra plows. That also means that we need 12 extra oxen. So let's do one, two, let's see, three, keep one bull, four, well that's coming of age, so that's fine, five, six, seven, eight, Let's keep it with that. So we already have eight extra bulls, nine, ten, eleven, because that one's coming of eight. So we just need one more bull, and then we can have all the new um, cards there. I don't think we have a... Yeah, we have a bull here. Twelve. All right, so all the bulls are there, which is good. We're getting to the uh, winter period, so hopefully... They have time to, to build all the plows and then bring them in. We'll have to check that though, because they of course have to get the bulls and then make everything ready in the carpenter. So yeah, they're going to build a plow. But that is going to take time. We do have enough metal parts, etc. So that's not a thing to worry about. So let's start with this farm. Let's start to set it up. Now there are a few different ways. You can go for five crop rotation which is pretty interesting, and we're going to do that on this farm. And basically you just need five different types of fields, and then you can um, do five different crops and then have a fallow field. So we need to have six. Now, of course, we need to move the fallow fields around a bit so that we don't get three fallow fields at one go. Um, but that's all fine. There's, there's no real specific order into this. Because what happens if you plow... When you don't plow, the um, amount of food they use is stated here. So if you plant wheat, 50% of the orange nutrients is used, 60% of the green nutrients is used, that's in the soil, and 0% of the blue nutrients. If you use a plow, you use one-fifth, so 20% less nutrients if you grow wheat. So that's already a good thing. If you have it fallow for every now and then, you add some extra nutrients. And because of the plowing, you add 15% extra nutrients for each of these every time you plow. So plowing adds a lot of nutrients to the soil that we can use to our benefit. And of course, when it's fallow, we put on the uh, cows, and that also really helps. So um, that's why we can have this five crop rotation system. Now we're going to focus on the production of potatoes and buckwheat. So we're going to do it like this. We do potato, buckwheat. Then we do a different thing because buckwheat and potato. Uh, or we can still do potato again. Then we do buckwheat, then we do potato, and then we have a fallow field. This way it should work and we should get the best amount of food for this type of farming. So let's do it the other way around this time. So we'll have um, buckwheat and potato. Then we'll have the fallow field right here and we'll do potatoes again. So basically the order is the same. Potato, buckwheat, potato, buckwheat, potato, buckwheat. But we've moved the fallow field around. So this time we'll put the fallow field, I guess, here. So then it's um, potato, buckwheat, potato, buckwheat and potato. We can't change this because this is the current season. They're still harvesting. So we'll do that later on. So this is a way in which you can greatly increase the amount of food that you will get from the fields. Which is splendid, of course. And we can see right here, this field has been fallow and it's completely filled with nutrients. This field has grown buckwheat. But it only used 35 of the available um, nutrients. While it says here... Um, it should have used a bit more. It should have even used uh, a bit of the blue ones, and it didn't. So that's very good. So it's a bit of trial and error. That's what we're going to do anyway. But basically, this should work. 
All right, as soon as season is over, we'll come back and we change this one. And then we'll have a new crop rotation system. Let's get to this farm, do the same thing. Although this time we're going to do it a little bit different because we also want different products in it. So this time we're going to do potatoes, then we do buckwheat. And then for a change, we add in some wheat. Then we do buckwheat again because potato and wheat are very similar. So we do buckwheat again and then we do potatoes. This way we get some extra wheat. Now we'll put the fallow field this time right here. So we'll start here. Potato, buckwheat, wheat, buckwheat and potato. And this time we'll put the fallow field right here. It's already there. So let's start here with potato well, we can't change that, so this should be buckwheat, this should be wheat, then we should get buckwheat, and then we should get potato. So now we have another field. There's the plow, by the way, so we have all the plows now that can really be used to um, optimize the food production. And we should, of course, it takes a few years to take some actual effect. I'm going to use speed 3, by the way. But uh, after a few years, we should see the amount of food growing. And this, of course, is a thing that you can apply as soon as you can get plows. We, I mean, it's now like episode 21 or something like that, or 22. And we're just applying this. But you can do this way earlier and then have a lot more crops, of course. All right, can we change this? No, not yet. All right, so we'll have to wait with that. Now, of course, there's also other ways we can do stuff. Because if we, for instance, want to optimize the wheat production, then... Uh, we have to do it differently. Ooh, we have to check this messenger, by the way, because maybe we, there's something we need to get. Oh, we still have plenty of that. Should we get some iron ore? Well, probably. So let's get like 3,500 or something. Deal. I think we have enough. Ooh, there's 2,000 in export stock, so let's do some potatoes. Although I need to check if they are right here in the boatyard, because if they're not, we'll have a problem. Oh, yes, they are. Perfect. So let's sell 2,000 potatoes, make a little bit of money. Do we have cucumber? Oh yes, we have a 1,000. Well, let's sell that. That works. All right, that's going great. What's this? Soil is empty. Oh, that'll be fine. I do hope the season is over, but I guess that just happens in winter time. So in this case, we want to max out the wheat production because we'd really want a lot of wheat. And one of the methods that I found that we are going to test is uh, start to produce wheat, hennep, then wheat, and then another fellow field. So we'll do one extra wheat this time. Ooh, we can change them now. No, not. All right. So if we start with this one, wheat, hennep, wheat, fellow, then we'll do the fellow field right here. So we'll do wheat, hennep. And in this case, we'll do the fellow field right here. And then we get wheat and up weed and that's it all right all we need is to change this one now but we can't so we'll have to wait with that until season is over that's probably in november i guess when the snow comes i'm not 100 sure but we'll see good thing is slowly they're keeping uh, the production up so we're over 700 people now which is very good we still have good amounts of food, I think. Almost 20,000 buckwheat. We have over 20,000 potatoes. We have over 11,000 wheat. So that's going very well. We do have a little bit of linseed now. So we're going to set up some flax farms as well. But this should do the trick. Alright, we can change it out now. So wheat... Hennep, wheat, that should do the trick. And now they're all the same, and if they use the plows, we should get a really good production there. There's another messenger. Also by boat. Do we need some of this? Well, we can use an extra thousand. Let's do a deal. No carrots, I don't think we have onions, etc. No, we don't, so that's all fine. Nothing to sell here, I think. I wouldn't know why we would sell this, because we don't have that much. So let's keep it like that. Do we have some sunflower oil? Oh, a little bit. Can we sell that? Oh, there's nothing in the export stock, so let's not sell that. 
I want to check how much flour we have. We have 500 flour now, so we're actually producing a little surplus of flour. That's perfect. All right, we need to go back to these farms because we had to set them up properly. So this one needed to be changed, I believe. We have potato, buckwheat, potato, buckwheat, potato. That should do the trick. Then we get the fellow field right here, but that's fine. So these are all set up now. This one will work. Let's take this one. Buckwheat, potato, buckwheat, wheat, buckwheat, potato. Potato, buckwheat, wheat, buckwheat, potato. Potato, buckwheat, wheat, buckwheat, potato. All right, that's fine. This one is set up now, so that's going to work. This one's completely done. So we've already set up three farms for next year. Let's do this one. And yeah, what should we do this one with? Well, I think we need an extra uh, farm with just potatoes and buckwheat. So let's set that up. Five fields and then... So, potato, buckwheat, potato, buckwheat, potatoes. That should work. Then we get the fellow field right here. So we'll do potato, buckwheat, potato, buckwheat, and potatoes. Then here we do the fellow field. I don't know, right here. That's fine. So we'll do potato... Buckwheat, potato, buckwheat, potato. So that's going to work as well. All right, this one is set up. I think we should do really well on the food business now. All right, let's see. Because we have one here that's producing sunflower oil. Now, sunflower oil is a bit tricky. Because as you can see, it uses all of the orange uh, nutrients. So basically, if you want to get sunflower, the most of it, we need to set it up in a way that it just produces sunflower and then have a fallow field. It's usually for the best. So we're going to set it up like that, but do it like this. Two produce sunflowers and one fallow field, and then a year later it'll be turned around. What we could try is add an extra field and see if that works, because then we have four fields, but there's only two producing all the time, so that should work. But we don't really have room for it right now, so that could be an issue. But for sunflower production, you just want to produce as many sunflowers as you can, and you just need a fellow field after that. The messenger from Merefa came in again. Oh, we can sell some flax again. We have plenty. So let's do so. That should be it. And now let's check this farm. This is one of the last farms that we set up for um, production again. Now let's see. If we want to produce flax, it uses up 60% of the blue one. So we could interact it with wheat, I think. So let's just try and set it up, see if it works. We'll set it up. Wheat, flax. Oops. Flax. We'll do wheat again. We'll do flax again. And we'll do wheat again. So we get a lot of wheat that we need a lot of, and we get a lot of flax, which also means we get a lot of linseed. And we can use that to our advantage on the um, chicken coos, for instance, and we don't need wheat anymore there, then, because we produce enough linseed, and that could really help us out. Alright, that's set up. That should do the trick. It has its plow coming in, so that's good, because it was recently built. So this should really ramp up the production of all the different... There comes the plow, by the way. Of all the different types of food. So I'm really curious to see how well it'll work. Oh, we have enough sunflower oil. That's very good. Do we have some buckwheat? Yes, plenty. We still have 4, 000, 8, 8,000 wheat, so... Ooh, we should sell 971 then, if we have that in the export stock. Perfect. Let's make some money. Alright, we're almost done building all these houses. Very cool, so we can set up a new production chain again, I think. We're going to leave these farms to just do what they already did, because these don't have plows, and we're not going to put in the... Um, 
another crop rotation system. Now, if you want to learn more about the crop rotation system, if you just go to Google and you Google uh, Ostriff crop rotation guide, then you'll get, find a perfect guide on the wiki, which shows you how to do this and how to work with this, which can be pretty handy. So I suggest you go there and just learn all you can about it right there. That's where I get my information from before I start trial and erroring. So that could be a very good thing and then you can really learn how to work with it and how to optimize the production. And of course a lot of houses still produce their own food as well so we should be getting a lot of food this way. At least I hope. Of course it takes time to get into effect. Uh, basically you need five years to see whether you are actually producing a lot more food at the same time in those five years your village will probably go so grow so maybe you'll end up by seeing that you still produce plenty of food for your village but it doesn't really grow in numbers so right now we have about 17,000 buckwheat maybe in five years we'll still have 17,000 buckwheat each year but that's prob could also mean that we added a hundred people to the village that all eat so that we actually did increase the num the amount of food that we are producing but we just don't see it because it's going straight to all the new mouth so keep that in mind if you really want to test it you shouldn't grow your village and you should just play for five years and see whether you get extra food out of it of course i'm not going to do that we are going to expand our village so that could cloud your judgment a little bit and think oh well it doesn't work because i still don't get uh, much extra food but yeah if you get a lot of mouths to feed extra then you did get the extra amount of food it just doesn't show because it's going straight into people's mouth now let's see let's add a few homes I guess perhaps we should also add an extra tavern because the people right here can't get to a tavern and I actually think that's a good idea and perhaps we should add another school again so let's work on this area a little bit I think we need to uh, rotate it a little bit yep yeah. There it goes. So we'll build a tavern right here. And... Government town hall. We need to go to the educational. But let's build a school here as well. Well, we want people to be able to... Uh, chillax here a bit. We'll put a nice big tree in the center. There we go. All right, that's one step. Another step could be to add some food to this area. So let's also place a granary right here and set it all up for food so that we can build a lot of homes around it because that will be great. All right, that's one, two, three, Four. I want the granary to be built first because then we can start to distribute food here. And in the meantime, let's add some housing to this area. Right, let's see. One, two, three. One, two. I'm going to do this block by block and add everything it needs straight away so we don't have to come back for that. So that's it. Next block of houses. Let's do it this way now. One, two, three. So we're getting further and further away from where we initially started, but that was the whole idea because we want to have a nice game all around the map. And if you look at the map, you can see that we actually got quite far. I mean, we started off right here, and now we are already building here. And I think that's pretty cool. So just give me your thoughts on this game and how we are progressing. And how do you progress games like this? If you get this far, do you really plan ahead and, and have an idea in your head when you start a map or do you just go with the flow and see wherever the game takes you or how do you do that I mean this is basically what I had in mind that's why I'm building all this the way I'm building it 
we started off on the open patch, but then we had to clear the forest and we put on put in quite a bit of effort to actually do that. Let's do reshape this one a little bit. Yep, just like this. So yeah, I, I had this in mind, and of course sometimes the games takes you to places where you didn't think of. But the the big storyline, well, there's no, there's not a real storyline, of course, but the big picture is what I had in mind. We'll start off right here, expand alongside the river. Well, we did that quite a bit, I think. And then see if we can get through this dense forest. And we got through and expand this way. And I, uh, I really like it. We're going to build a large chunk of village here again. Messenger from Derkachi. Let's sell some charcoal. Can we sell some shoes? No, we don't have ourselves, so let's not do that. Let's not sell buckwheat. We keep the rest, so this is all fine. Granary completed. Alright, let's see. What do we have here? Do we have everything we need right here? I think so. So let's copy this one. Put it in here. Now let's set this up. So we have buckwheat, beef, chicken eggs, and chicken meat. Then we get clothing, we have firewood, we want fish, and we want flour to be sold. Anything else? Honey and cabbage. Cabbage. Honey. Oops. Um, some orilka perhaps, and some meat, I guess. But we don't really need to sell those because they can get it in the uh, potatoes let's see some sunflower oil some warm clothing so I guess we remove this and put in shoes there because that's a thing they need as well and perhaps some well this should be it for now all right then let's get to another market stall and do the hiring options and say apply to all and this one apply to all and now these should all have workers yes they do they're getting the food etc family is out of firewood yeah that's probably because it's a little bit too far away to actually get it and it's probably going pretty fast so we need to build another warehouse store some firewood in this area now we can do it just like this, I think. We'll move it up because we have quite a long building queue now. So that we store firewood in this area. And then the market people can get it from here. That's probably for the best. And then they can get the firewood that they need. Alright. Winter's over, so that's a good thing actually. Now for the first time... Our three crop rotation system will start. And you can see immediately that all these fields are used now. So all three will be farmed. Good. Same here. So we should see an increase in, in food. This one didn't get to where it needs to be, I think. Let me check. Luckily, yeah, it's not where it needs to be. But next year it'll be a fellow field, so that's fine. That will work out in the end. Alright. Not a lot of open jobs, but we also have a lot of people available, so that's fine. Construction completed. The warehouse. Well, let's put in firewood. Um, let's check. Yeah. 10,000 is the max. So there we go. Then, um, let's go to another one and let's do just apply to all. That's for the best. Apply to all. So now they'll bring in a huge load of firewood here. That should help spread out the firewood. Alright, so we did quite the advancements. We, we set up a lot of changes on the farms. 
And, well, we are trying to build a whole new neighborhood again, which is nice. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to my channel. And, of course, I hope to see you in another video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.